So let's do this short and sweet. <laughs> I got woozles, aka ferrets, aka stink weasels. I went ahead with their cage and some of the things I made myself. So that is what we are going to talk about today. That is one of the things I'm showing you how to make and that is going to be another one. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. It's my favorite baby. So let's jump right into the video. Right here, we're going to be making a ferret tunnel. So I made one in the background. You can see it right there. And this is the one that we're working on now. I used old jean pant legs, not too tight, so that there's a bit of a sag to them and a little bit more air. So on the ends, we are going to go ahead and finish them. So you roll over just a little bit of the fabric. You pin it down with these pins, and I do this on each end, unless it was already finished because it's a pant leg, and then you just sew over that end. So once we go ahead and sew these down, we have this finished product right here, and then we are going to roll it over again and make a sort of pocket. So right here, we have it rolled over the second time, much bigger so we can cut holes into it and we can feed through a string or whatever so that it will be able to hang from the top of our cage now the second step that i did was i took little tiny bits of the inside of the fabric so the jeans are still inside out and I just caught a little bit of that fabric. This makes it to where there are, are little catches in the fabric so it's not slick. So that the critter, in my case a ferret, can crawl up the tube and they have something that they can catch their little paws on to help them get up the tube and not just slide down it like a slide. So here I will show you a little bit closer how you're just catching the very tip of the fabric. You don't want a whole lot of the fabric. Of course, you want to go forwards and backwards and whatnot so that it is not going to just undo over time. I do this just from sight all of the way down the pant leg. Then, once you're done with that, you're going to turn it inside out or outside in I don't know <laughs> and you will have this product right here so see right here where I'm putting my fingers you're gonna go ahead and cut your holes now so that you can feed through whatever you are attaching to the top of the cage whether that be just a simple string or whether you want more of a thick leather kind of material whatever you have so I went ahead and I pinched it from sight, I went ahead, cut a little hole, and I don't finish these. I don't see the reason to. If you wanted to, you definitely could. I do this to both sides, and then it looks like this, and it is ready for us to feed through the string. So for this specific one, I went ahead and just had this right here. I wanted to make hoops on either end and so I folded it over, pinned it, and here I am sewing it down to make it into a hoop. That way if I use a miniature carabiner or whatever I choose to use, it will be something where I can just hoop that through. So you use a little safety pin unless you specifically have <laughs> the proper tools for this. I do not, so I'm using a safety pin and you go in the second hole right here and you are slowly going to feed it through the fabric. So usually what you do is you push it in and then you bunch up the fabric on the safety pin and then you straighten it out just like this, see? So I'm going to do this all the way around until the fabric comes out of the first hole, thus completing the first end to this tunnel. I went ahead and used both pant legs 
So I am making two tunnels so that one of them I can wash while the other is in their cage. For my tunnel, I wanted one end to be shorter than the other, so you do wanna measure these strings or fabric or whatever you're using. You wanna measure it specifically to your cage. So now that I have this through, here is a simple hook just to show you the idea that's going on here. So you go ahead and move that through and then you can hook it up. Now for my second one, I'm showing a different one. I have more of a coarse material here and I went ahead and looped the fabric through a key ring and then I'm just using the key ring to go all of the way through. It's a little bit harder whenever you're first starting out, but here you can see the end product. Now, this is the other end. I used an old purse strap that already had the hooks on it and just fed that through for the end that I wanted to go farther down to the lower shelf. So here you can kind of see the lower shelf and then it goes up. And you can see where we caught all that fabric as well. So this is the end product of the tube which I am very happy with. And as you can see on the left side, that is the first ones that we made with those hooks. Now, if you are looking at it from the inside, this is the view that your little critter will be seeing. And it's something where they can get up on those little catches. So let's move on to our second project, which is the ferret hammock. You're going to have two pieces of fabric, preferably one that is not so stretchy and one that will be soft. And then you're going to go ahead and pin that together as our first step after you have cut it into a perfect square. You do want them to be fairly large for your ferret. I made some of these a little bit too small. Now, here is my fabric that's going to go on the underside. I do need two squares out of this fabric because I want to be able to wash one and have one in the cage. You're going to need scissors, pins to pin it, a writing utensil, a measuring tape, and I also like to use a ruler. Now I fold it over the fabric and I use the ruler to flatten out that fabric so that I can get a more precise line and what I'm going to do then is I'm going to pin the edge that I just folded over. Now if you had a roller or some other kind of cutting board, then you wouldn't have to do this step, but I do not, so I do have to do this step. Then I fold it over again and I'm going to pin that edge as well. These will help me as a guide to cut a more precise and straight line for my pattern. Now I take that second edge and I'm going to cut along the edge. As I said, this will make it to where it is more of a straight line. When I finish that, I'm going to then take out all the pins because we don't need to have the extra fabric that I'm about to separate out. We can use that for something else perhaps. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put that to the side for now. Then I'm going to take these and I'm going to cut along that edge now so that we have two perfect square pieces of fabric. These are the ones that I'm using as the fabric that will hold the shape. So here's the two pieces. So working with one of them, what we are going to do is we are going to make sure that the side that we want to have on the outside is facing up. And then with the other fabric, with this one right here, we want the side facing down. So basically what you're seeing right now on either side, whenever I flip it, once it's pinned together, these are not the sides that you will ever see. These are the insides of the fabric. So you now are going to sew down all the edges except for one. And on that last edge, you are leaving a good amount of space, probably about this much space, because we have to make it inside out. Once I finished sewing all of the edges except for that little tiny bit. I actually didn't leave myself quite enough, but that's okay. 
I go ahead and I put my finger in the hole. I grab the opposite corner and I slowly, so that I don't rip it, feed the fabric back through so that it's inside out. This will make it to where it is more of a finished look. It is the same basic idea of how to make a homemade pillow. So that's what you're going to do for your hammocks as well. So here I am just feeding that fabric through. And then if I flatten it out, you can see how it kind of looks like the hammock without the little hooks on the four corners. And see right here, I would just need to finish up that edge that I just was messing with. So here's the one side and here is the other side. It's a nice thick but soft fabric. And then I have a thin one on this side. This hammock is much thinner. It's more of a summer hammock, if you will. So here is just once more showing you again with a different fabric that I did, how if you leave a little more room, you can put your hand in there and then you feed the fabric back through. And grab that corner, feed it through, and then I'm able to flatten it out into the nice square flat shape that it's supposed to be. There's my soft side, there is my more sturdy side to keep the shape, and there is the unfinished hole. So now we are going to go ahead and we are going to make the hoops for the four corners. So you take a very sturdy string like this one, you tie a four corner kind of knot that is not going to slip. You have to be able to pull on that, make sure it's not gonna slip. Then you put the end with the knot inside and you sew over it so that it is very sturdy and it will not rip out. You're gonna do this to all the corners. So see, this one right here isn't finished. I have the pins still in it and the knot is inside there. So I kind of just puckered the fabric over it and I went ahead and sewed over that end. I went ahead and I made four hammocks just like this so that I'll have two in the cage at all times and be able to wash the other two. So now we're going to make the straps. I used old purse straps for the one that I need to be a little bit longer and I went ahead and did that same idea where you fold it over the key ring and then you sew over it. Since this is leather though, my sewing machine cannot do the fatter one over here that I'm showing you right now. It could only do the thinner one. So those ones I had to do by hand. I do have four of them, one for each corner, since I need these to go farther down, and I'll show you the one that I have closer to the top of the cage later. So here you can see it does take quite a bit for my sewing machine to be able to go over this kind of material, since it is such a thick faux leather kind of material. But it does work great, it is very sturdy, and it's not going to come undone. For the hand sewing ones, I went ahead and used a very thick thread. I double threaded it and knotted the end. And then I went ahead and very slowly and carefully went through this fabric. You wanna make sure, of course, not to stab yourself. Take your time. Don't be in too much of a rush for this <laughs> project. That could go very bad. And here you can see I pull it through. I don't do a bunch. I did it in kind of a square sort of design so that it's very sturdy though. So here is one of the finished ones, and then I just have four more to do. So here you can see the final product. I went ahead and used those hooks just to show you this. You could use carabiners or whatever you prefer as your hook. And then I went ahead and put those hooks on the things so that they're quite easy to get undone. I actually switched to carabiners later on, but this one, see, it is quite far down the cage, and that's why we needed all four corners. For the hammocks that are higher up, I did use purse straps again, but they were much shorter. I wove them through so that it's just the very top of the cage as a little bed for them. And it already had all of the attachments, so I just went ahead and used one of those hooks to attach it on there and make it a little bit more sturdy. I put heavy sacks in these to make sure that they were sturdy enough for the ferrets. 
So that is all that you have to do to make this.